This can be a very stressful part of the job. Yesterday I started two projects. I laid out an area, a new area for our goats, and I started mucking out the chicken run. I didn't actually shoot any video yesterday of mucking out the run, but there's still a little bit to do and I might shoot that last little bit today. Mucking out this run was a job that I'd been putting off for way too long. Better late than never, I guess, is how I'll have to describe it. When I get out to the compost bins, I'll show you how much material I've actually shoveled out of here. Deciding exactly where to put the goat shelter, how big it's going to be, how the fences are going to work, this can be a very stressful part of the job. It has to be functional, but it's a decision that will greatly impact the lived experience of this space for us. I really want it to be right and it's an awkward little space to work with. So, so it took a while to kind of come to a decision on exactly how everything is going to, going to work. The goat shelter itself is on a sloping terrain. I'll be setting the posts in concrete, but I've laid out the, uh, the base here with pressure treated lumber just to get an idea of where it's going to go and how it's going to work. I've got two by sixes on the uphill, slide, uphill side and the back, and a two by ten over here on the bottom side where it's lower. On this uh, lower side, I'm going to have to shim it a little bit with some bricks or, or something. Haven't quite decided yet. And this uphill side will be half buried, actually in order to make this whole thing level. We didn't want to completely level it out because then the, the lower side would be buried too far down. And you want a little bit of grade anyways, just so water will flow downhill like it should. So I think this is a good compromise, partially shimmed, partially leveled. We'll see how it works. This isn't the most professional way to lay out a fence line but I had a whole bunch of two by fours that I just bought that I'm gonna be building the goat shelter with. So it was a quick and at hand way to lay out some straight edges for the possible fence line, to play with different ideas. You know, what would happen if we had a turn here versus there? Uh, how do we make it work for the gates and, and uh, the terrain and other obstacles that we're working around? This is the real Brian Grimes. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about this before we filmed anything. That's fine. I'm just doing B-roll. <laughs> so where would you want your gates to be? We have two gates for this area. So is the two by four, that's the gate, the fence? Yeah, that's a fence line. Maybe. If we have the gate, it'd be awkward because it's going yeah. to a hill or... It's not a good angle. Straight. It's, it's not still, a good angle right there it's for a gate. A good, still not a good angle because you're not, you know, you're not turn with the wheel barrel to get through it. Yeah. Well, probably if I was doing a wheel barrel thing, I'd go down that side gate anyways. That's the one I'm thinking should be the bigger gate. Let's walk down there and look. It's, that problem's down there too. This would come as I wonder a, if you could put a gate a, right here. No, this would come as a straight and straight. So not a very good spot for a gate either because you're not only sinking down the hillside this way and turning, it's even more awkward than up, up above. We can't do it. the fence posts right next to the tree because of roots. Everywhere we have a corner, we need to have one fence, one fence post. Yeah. And then go out about, I don't know, what, six or eight feet. Yeah. And do another fence post and another fence post. 
So it's gonna be by the tree. What if he did the fence post right down here? You can't do that. Why? You're gonna have to walking path. Walking to where? I need it. For what? For walking. I walk it all the time. For what? To get down the other side. What's the point of all that down there then? You can't get down that way very well. There's a path down here. <laughs> but apparently we need to use this path. If I had my way, we would be using this whole section for my goat. This is a possibility for a gate. I don't... It would have to open out. That that's complete. You're making these gates be completely inconvenient to accessing the goats. I'm still not understanding why I can't have a gate like right in here. Because this is the the slope of the hill and the softness of the terrain make this the hardest place to turn something around and go up. And you need the slope of the hill so water will drain the way it's supposed to go. Okay. Now, of course, those ferns won't be there if we have goats in here. So a gate, a wider gate for going in and out. I'm just not seeing how you're going to wheel a wheelbarrow back there. With I'm just tr trying to think ahead. If we need a wheelbarrow for anything in there, then we need a gate that, that would accommodate that. Well, you're going to have to get them around all those trees that you're protecting and yeah, it would be a little more difficult to throw up so these it looks like well not only that but it looks to me this appears to be every bit as narrow as the little gate that you were complaining about we could put the bigger gate up up above and the there's gate not down. very much space over there to put a bigger gate okay well, let's get the tape measure this is what i'm dealing with <laughs> You, you can rewatch this and, and see later what I'm dealing with. I thought it'd be nice to tie in this parallel, having that be the parallel to the chicken run. But then it's a weird angle and the gate. Yeah, well, I proposed a number of places where it wouldn't be a weird angle, but your walking paths are more important than my daily convenience. Here. So the other side where you have to dig a whole huge thing out, that's really a big deal, but this side isn't a big deal to dig out. Most of this is dirt that I put there, and it's pretty loose, easy to dig, except right next to the tree roots. These beautiful, horridly ugly trees that we have to keep, or somebody. <laughs> Would a gate make sense here if it was the four foot gate? Not if you're keeping those trees there, no. Because okay. I would rather not fight three with two foot, goats and two gap. trees to try and get them through the gate and out the thing. No. Well, then, then do you want the gate here? In the corner? You're going to need to walk through the food and water for the goats, right? Would it make sense to have it no. down the slope, maybe? No. Because the goats will be running around, right? It doesn't matter where the, the gate it is, just as long as it's close to the path here. I wanted it as close as I could get to their house. That was why I had originally said, can we make it go to the chicken coop and make the gate right where you're standing? One thing I had kind of thought about was, was utilizing this post itself as, uh, as one of the fence uh, posts. No, that's not a good idea. <laughs> it needs to be offset already. from the chickens. Okay. There's three feet. But you want the go you want the fence to be at the corner so you don't have to do additional posts and stretch a fence that's 18 inches wide, right? And then imagine if it started here. I think it's three feet wide. The, the 
vents would pivot and it would just hit there. But you might still be able to get through, probably not with anything you're carrying to at least nothing too big. Yeah. I'm not completely sold on why you think that the the fence lines need to be at right angles of each other for the area between these two posts that will hold the gate. It's just to accommodate the gate to swing out as far as it should. But if if those angles are obtuse angles rather than acute angles, then there will be no problem because the gate only goes 90 yeah, degrees. It, it all depends on where, where it is and what, what the gate would be running so into. So if this one spot. is coming at an obtuse angle and this one is going at this kind of an angle, you're not going to have a problem because all you need is one direction that's an obtuse. I really don't mind the idea of having a, this line be different than what I was thinking. If we go this way, then the, uh, the new fence line would allow me to keep these log rounds right where I wanted them. We have to make sure we keep our super awesome log rounds. <laughs> Brian's the only one who likes those log rounds around here. I can post that if I feel like it. <laughs> I think it's important that YouTube understand that Brian does things just because he likes it. <laughs> so then we're going right into the tree. We'd have to cut in a little bit further still. I like how instead of coming out on things, you're just decreased. No, no. We're not making a 10 foot square goat run that I'm going to maybe have to divide in half. Meanwhile, getting back to the chicken run. whole bin on the left was empty before I started shoveling out the chicken run. I have been layering in some debris from the right bin between these loads.
forest debris driveway sweeping require the industrial strength composting of chicken scratching and substantial marinating in their poop. That's my seat. <laughs> That's my seat, Rogue. Good goat. Good goat. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm going to take my coat off. It's actually gotten to be a pretty nice day out here today. Rosie. All right. Hi. So. <clears throat> Before we get too far along in the video, I wanted to Hello Rogue. I wanted to talk a little bit about why we're making a brand new area for goats when we just got our first two goats and they're over here on this side of the property. Did you wanna tell people what we're doing? We're getting boys. Boy goats. Yeah. Hopefully they smell better than Brian does. <laughs> I did just muck out the chicken run. <laughs> so You don't want him to touch me. <laughs> so originally we had thought about um, just having the girl goats and doing like artificial insemination. It seemed like it'd be cheaper than trying to you know, buy boy goats and you know feed them and water and space and raising goats just so they can breed with our goats. It seems ridiculous, but I guess it's more expensive to do the artificial insemination once you, and less reliable. Yeah, once you factor in that you have to buy so many of the s straws and then you have to have tanks and you have to have somebody come help you and you have to have all these other things happening and it just gets to be a lot and it's complicated and confusing and I just want to have a farm. <laughs> I don't want to have a clinic for goats. <laughs> the boy goats we're getting, we've actually picked them out already. Yep, I've you reserved them. Talk about it a little bit. There's one that's light brown with, with kind of brown spots on it, moon spots. It's beautiful. And then there's another one that's black with kind of um, some white spots and I guess they're not really spots on a goat, but it's more like a white goat with a bunch of black on it, <laughs> mostly black. So, but they're both very cute little frisky goats. So younger than these goats? They are younger. Um, so they were they were born in this kidding season. So they'll be ready to go after they've been here for maybe a couple more months or something. We'll wait and let them get get their little boy goat legs under them and other stuff. And okay. <laughs> well, spring is always a busy time working on projects yeah. out here. And as this is no exception. <laughs> I've got a lot of things I'd probably rather be doing than building the new goat area. Uh, I'd love to work on a better play area for these guys. Also, I've got that big pile of gravel. I wanted to do a French drain out, you know, down by our creek for the for the trail down there. But that can be done later. That's that's not yeah. a big deal. Brain's the only one that goes down there anyways. I still I still want it to be nice. Yeah. I'm sure <laughs> everybody out there on YouTube land appreciates the intros that I do with stuff that's down there or out in the forest or other places i suppose yeah i think it's i think it's beautiful we're peed talking. on what she peed on the ground right behind mm. your shoulder so it looks like a goat's peeing on your okay. shoulder probably okay <laughs> that's what i always wanted <laughs> so wendy mentioned something kind of surprising 
I said we were getting a little low on milk, and she said we're going to have plenty <laughs> after Saturday. <laughs> so I had to ask her why. Now you tell everybody else why. Well, now that we have our goats, and I know I really like and enjoy them, and they make me so happy, and I can feel my stress levels go down when I'm around them and things like that. I'm sort of feeling like, I really like to have another one so that I have one goat who's in milk a little bit more this time of year and another one that I'm raising to have kids in the fall so that I'm kind of balancing that and then we can, you know, Kind of have regular milk and things like that and then i was also thinking well i can't get any milk at the grocery store why don't i have another goat this is silly i should have the goat <laughs> and so i started looking and and kind of was like okay well you know then i was looking at the goats and i was not finding a nigerian like the ones that we have and the only other goat that i was kind of really thinking you know, do I like this one or do I like the Nigerians like we got is the Nubians just because I really love their ears and they're so cute and sweet and just really, really sweet, sweet goats. They have great personality in terms of being sweet. So, so I went ahead and got one of those Indeed. because, because they were, that was the one that I found right away and she's already in milk and she's good to go and so I just need to go pick her up on Saturday. Yeah. And then I can start using my milk stand and we can have milk. Yay. <laughs> Let's take a quick look at the, uh, the rough outline for the, for the fence. It'll connect to either side of the shelter itself. And it has to compete with this uh, chicken coop and the chicken run. This is the main path coming up to the chicken run. And we'll want a four foot gate there. So it'll be very accessible for wheelbarrows going into the new goat, goat area. These uh, hollowed out log round planters that I am so proud of. And it took me a long time to decide that they looked right here and these particular ones in, in particular. They're gonna have to go. I'll find a new spot for them. Right here, we want to keep this really quite majestic and well-established rhododendron outside of the goat area. I'm hoping it continues to grow and fill out and become a even more, uh, more outstanding rhododendron. And I don't want the goats to eat, eat it. So <laughs> keeping it, keeping the fence over there was kind of important. We'll probably have another small gate here on this end. You never know when you might need two gates into a goat area. area. <clears throat> you might need to uh, separate the goats and you want, ha want to have separate gates to be able to get in and take care of them separately. The new goat area will be a little creative with the fence design. But I'm looking forward to it. 